subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon so that you are notified every time i post a new lesson hello dear students do you know how the 250 grams kidneys filter 180 liters of primary urine in a day but urinates only 1 to 1.5 liters per day yeah it's because of selective reabsorption that takes place in the renal tubule of nephron of course this is your ma'am sarala welcome to another lesson on urine formation today we we'll learn about selective reabsorption and renal secretion the second part of urine formation in the previous section we we'll learn about glomerular filtration our two kidneys together produce 125 ml of urine per minute this is known as glomerular filtration rate so when we calculate per day it becomes 180 liters of primary urine but we urinate 1 to 1.5 liters of urine per day so that 99% of glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed into the blood only 1% is eliminated how this occurs we will see now so first one selective reabsorption so selective reabsorption occurs in the renal tubule of the kidney so this is the bowman's capsule part here uh, glomerular filtration occurs so this is the area where the renal re reabsorption takes place so these are the different parts of the nephron so in different parts of the nephron different amounts of uh, nutrients and water are reabsorbed so the epithelial cells which are present in the proximal convoluted tubule or cuboidal cells with brush borders so brush border increases the area of reabsorption so the reabsorption of 85% of primary urine occurs in the proximal convoluted tubule and the descending limb of the henle the reabsorption which occurs in the pct and descending limb of henle is known as mandatory or obligatory reabsorption because it is compulsory reabsorption so 85% of glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed in these two parts especially in the proximal convoluted tubule based on the necessity of absorption the substance of glomerular filtrate can be grouped into three types high threshold substances low threshold substances and a threshold substances so high threshold substances like glucose amino acid vitamins and some salts are efficiently reabsorbed into the blood and low threshold substances are the substances substances these are the substances which are reabsorbed in a very minute quantities very little amount is reabsorbed the substances are like urea urea and uric acid next a threshold substances so these are the actual excretory products so these substances do not reabsorbed at all so these are completely eliminated example the substances for a threshold substances is creatinine so this is the main excretory product so tubular secretion means the renal tubule the cells of the renal tub tubule so here the all the inner wall wall of the renal tubule contains cells and these are known as tubular cells so these cells secrete substances like hydrogen ion potassium ion and ammonia into the filtrate to maintain the ph value to maintain the ph value and ionic balance of the body fluids or the blood so tubular secretion is also very important the secretion of the hydrogen ions potassium ions and ammonia from tubular cells into the filtrate into the filtrate is known as tubular secretion so let us study what are the substances which are reabsorbed in different parts of the nephron 
So, the first part is uh, PCT. So, in PCT, so this is a proximal convoluted tubule, 70 to 80 percent of water is reabsorbed. And electrolyte, electrolytes like uh, Na plus, K plus and Cl minus ions are also absorbed here. So, sodium ions are actively transported into the interstitial fluid of the cortex. So, this is the part which is present in the cortical region. So, this is the outer medulla region. In the medulla region, Henle's loop is present. Remaining renal tubule occurs in the cortical part. So, the outside of this uh, outside of nephron is known as interstitial medium or interstitial fluid. So, from proximal convoluted tubule, sodium ions and water potassium ions and nutrients like glucose, amino acids and vitamins and some salts are reabsorbed into the interstitial fluid which is present in the cortical region. So, water is reabsorbed by osmosis, sodium ions are reabsorbed by active transport. So, as the sodium ions are moves out to, uh, to balance the charges, the chloride ions passively moves out. Here in this proximal convoluted tubule, the tubular cells secrete ammonia and H plus ions into the filtrate. So, this is known as a secretion. CT continues as a Henle's loop. So, this Henle's loop contains two limbs, descending limb and the ascending limb. So, in the descending limb, 5 percent of reabsorption occurs. But what is the importance of Henle's loop? Henle's loop is very important to maintain the osmolarity of the medullary regions. So, osmolarity to maintain the osmolarity in the medullary region, Henle's loop is very very important. So, the descending limb is permeable to water. So, the water comes out from the filtrate into the outer medullary interstitial fluid. So, as, as the water comes out, the filtrate concentration increases gradually as the filtrate moves downwards that is towards the inner medullary region. So, as it enters the sound downwards, uh, the hairpin, uh, the U-turn here the concentration becomes maximum. And again when the filtrate moves upwards towards the ascending limb, ascending limb contains two regions, proximal thin segment and distal thick segment. Proximal thin segment is permeable to sodium chloride that is electrolytes, but impermeable to water. So, NaCl comes out of the thin ascending limb by a passive transport. But in the thick region, in the thick region, NaCl comes out by active process as the sodium and chloride ions are moving out from the filtrate into the interstitial fluid of the medulla, the concentration gradually decreases. So, water, this loop that is ascending limb is impermeable to water. So, here uh, you have to remember that descending limb is permeable to water, impermeable to electrolytes. But the ascending limb is permeable to electrolytes, but impermeable to water. Due to this nature, the filtrate as it goes upwards towards the dis distal convoluted tubule concentration gradually decreases. In the distal convoluted tubule, so, here the tubular cells are cuboidal, but smaller than the proximal convoluted tubule and brush border also absent. So, this indicates the brush border, absence of brush border indicates that here the distal convoluted tubule is not involved in reabsorption as the proximal convoluted tubule. So, here the reabsorption of water depend upon several factors and it is under the control of a hormone which is known as ADH or vasopressin, antidiuretic hormone. That is known as conditional reabsorption or facultative reabsorption. 
So, in the distal convoluted tubule here also the H plus ions and potassium ions and ammonia ions are secreted into the filtrate. As these are secreted into the filtrate, the bicarbonate ions are goes out into the interstitial fluid. Convoluted tubule, the K plus ions and H plus ions and ammonia ions are secreted to maintain the pH value and the ionic balance of potassium and sodium ions in blood. So, next the filtrate moves into collecting duct. Here in the collecting duct, here in the collecting duct considerable amount of water is reabsorbed to produce the concentrated urine. So, here also secretion tubular secretion occurs that is H plus and K plus ions are secreted into the filtrate. So, from this collecting duct some amount of urea is also some amount of urea is also passes out from the filtrate into the medullary interstitial fluid to maintain the high osmolarity in the medullary region. So, next one in the collecting duct also some amount of water is reabsorbed depending upon the conditions. Here also it is known as facultative reabsorption. So, like this the urine formed in the collecting duct is actually sent out. So, this urine is a hypertonic when compared to the plasma of the blood. So, like this the primary urine which is hypotonic to the plasma becomes a hypertonic urine which is sent out after selective reabsorption and secretion. So, this is the importance of juxtamedullary nephron. So, this nephron is juxtamedullary because the Henle's loop is deeply seated into the medulla. Hope you understand. We will study the regulation of kidneys in the next class.